Hi, I'm Will from Link and this video is an overview of Link reporting. We're going to cover all the fundamentals looking at every report in the system and how to schedule reports so you can share the information with your team. Now this whole session will be less than 15 minutes so it's going to be the fastest way to get up and running. If you do stay to the end I'm going to cover my three top tips on how to improve the performance in your practice. So let's get into it. So here we are on the home page of Link Reporting. Now, uh, our menu's on the left hand side, so we've got our home here, which is where we are right now, and we have four types of reports. We have job reports, WIP or work in progress reports, team reports, and client reports. Now, our job reports are split into two types of reports. We've got our open job reports and our completed job report. Now the difference between the two is whether the job is completed or not. If it is completed, you'll find it in here, and if it is open and still being worked on, it'll be in this report here. Now we, in our WIP reports, we have two types of WIP reports. WIP performance, which is a multiple period WIP report, and our WIP movement report, which is looking at a single period, but we have multiple uh, groupings we can use. Our team reports here, uh, like our WIP reports, but we bring in time data which allows us to calculate average hourly rates. And finally we have our client reports here. Now client reports, like our team reports, are WIP based, but we bring in that time data so we can calculate our average charge rates. Right, so what we'll do is we'll look at each of these reports, starting with our open job report. Now our open job report is very simple, it's just going to group all of our jobs by job info. Now if we do hit show more, you can see there's a lot of other options here. One thing you may want to consider is adding a filter by job manager, and what this does is it allows us to filter the report just by a single job manager. Let's run the report. So this report is looking at all of our open jobs that Yasmin Young is the job manager on as at today. So a great way to run this report is to sort it either by remaining time or budget remaining. So here we can see right at the top of the report, these are the jobs that are currently at risk for Yasmin. So we can expand the job to get a full breakdown of the tasks and all the financial information on this job. So this is a fantastic report for your job managers to use to keep on top of their budgets that they have available on their jobs. Now let's take a look at our completed job report. So the completed job report is something you want to run each month looking at the completed jobs from the previous month. This gives us great insight into jobs which we potentially had large write-offs on, which allows us to see areas that we can improve. So it runs by last month and group by job info. So let's hit run. So this is a list of all the jobs we completed last month. Now a great way to sort this is by average charge rate. So at the top of the report here we have our most profitable jobs. With These are the rates that we build per hour on the jobs. If we scroll right to the bottom, we'll see jobs that didn't perform so well. So this job here we charged out at $12 per hour and the one above it $53 an hour. So we want to be looking into this to see what actually happened because this is going to give us great insight into where we can improve. It's very interesting to see here that we wrote off $6,286, which is 55% of our time. If we want to investigate this further, very simply, we can click on it, which takes us to a transaction drill down. We can see here that Peter Picklesworth was the team member working on this job. Let's jump back into the report. The completed job report is something you want to look at every month, so you may want to schedule it. You can do that by using the schedule button, giving the report a name, entering all the email addresses of people you'd like to receive the report, Selecting a start date for the report, early next month is a good idea, the frequency, and then the format you'd like to receive it. If you do have a large team, you may want to consider using filters in this report, so when you schedule them, people are only receiving jobs on the list that are relevant to them. Now let's take a look at our WIP reports, starting with the WIP performance report. The WIP performance report is going to show us all of our work in progress movements for last month, compared to the 11 previous periods. So this is 12 months of work in progress movements and it provides incredible insight into our practice. We have our opening work in progress each month, which is the amount of unbilled time and cost at the start of the month. We can see the time and disbursements added and how much we invoiced each month. We then have a breakdown of our write-ups and our write-offs, giving our total write-ups for the month. And then finally our closing whip balance. And you'll see that our closing whip balance creates our opening whip balance for the next month. At the bottom we have our WIP multiple, which is the amount of WIP that we have in our closing balance compared to the amount of time and cost we did for that month, and finally our write-up percentage. It's a great idea to keep your WIP balance as low as possible because you're better to have cash in the bank than WIP sitting in this report here. Another great way to run this report is for the current financial year. This is allows us to see how we're tracking for this financial year with our totals on the right hand side there. Let's take a look at the WIP movement report. 
The whip movement report has exactly the same values as the whip performance report, but here we're only looking at a single period. We're able to view it with a breakdown with two levels of groupings. This report is going to run by the current month, looking at our job managers and then the jobs that the job managers are working on. This report's fantastic for understanding where your work in progress is sitting and reducing the balance. Let's sort this report by closing WIP. Here we can see Johnny Joseph has the highest WIP balance of all our job managers with over $100,000. He started the period with $73,000, he's added $35,000 of time this month, $785 of disbursements, we've invoiced $8,000 and there's been of $1,367. We can expand Johnny Joseph here to see a breakdown of all of his jobs. You can see most of the WIP is on this job at the top, the Hemorrhage Harry Limited, followed by Hannah's Hot Dogs Limited. What we're really interested in here is jobs that have got stagnant WIP on them. You can see for Larry's Lawn Feeders and Food to You Limited, we've done no time this month, but we're still carrying quite significant WIP balances. We may want to investigate this by clicking into the values. Here we can get an understanding of who's working on the job and the age of that work in progress. Let's jump back into the report. This is another great report to schedule to your job managers. To do this, Add a filter by job manager. Then change your group into client or client group. Run the report. Sort it by closing WIP. Then go ahead and schedule this on a monthly basis at the end or at the start of each month. This allows your job managers to keep on top of their work in progress. Let's check out the team reports. We'll start with practice performance. The practice performance report is just like our WIP performance report as it shows multiple periods except it includes time data, which allows us to calculate things such as average hourly rates. We can run it for last month, which will show us the last month and the previous 12 periods, or we may want to look at this current financial year. Here we can see a full summary of our financial year on one page. You have the total billable hours that have been completed in each month, the total non-billable hours giving us the total time for each month. We then have our leave, which is separated out so we can accurately calculate our productivity. We then have our total billable amount of time that we've done. So it's important to note here, there is no disbursements considered in the practice performance report. We then have our write-ups and our write-offs, giving us our net write-ups on our time, giving us our write-up percentage. And then we have our revenue. Now it's important to note here that revenue is different to what we have invoiced. If you wanna know what you've invoiced, you'd head back to the WIP performance report. Here, however, is we get revenue by taking the billable work that we've done for the month, and then adjusting it by the net write-ups, which gives us our revenue. The reason we calculate this is we use it to calculate our average hourly rate. Our average hourly rate is the total revenue for the period divided by total time for the period. By using revenue to calculate our average hourly rate, we have a really smooth representation based on work that's been actually completed rather than when our invoicing actually occurred. Now this is a great report to use when you want to see overall how is your practice performing. Let's take a look at the team performance report. The team performance report is taking the values we saw in the previous report, but we're looking at a single month and we're breaking it out by the people in our practice. First, we wanna select how we want to group our team members in this report. Now, these can all be set up along with mapping each team into a grouping by going to settings and then down to our team mappings here. The default date range is last month, which is generally how we want to run this report. So here is our team performance report. Now it's a great idea to sort the report based on what you want to look at. So let's start with productivity. You can see here that our billable team had the highest productivity followed by our managers. Now we can expand this grouping here to see all of the people that make up those values. And this report really highlights why we use revenue rather than invoice value to calculate that average hourly rate because we can't assign a deposit invoice to a team member, therefore we need to run off the work they've done and adjusted by their write-ups. If we'd like to know where the $2,900 was written off, we can click into it, which takes us to a transaction summary grouped by job. Here we can see a list of all the jobs and the timesheets that went into this write-off. If we jump back into the report, we may be interested to see how Paul has performed on other months. We can do this very simply by clicking on his name here. This takes us to a 12-month summary for Paul, so we can go through and check that if his performance is improving or dropping off. Now's a good time to mention that we can add and remove fields from reports. In every report, you can hit add and show fields, and there's extra information in here, such as cost, profit, and ROI that you can include on the reports. This is great to get deeper insight into the performance of your team, but perhaps if we're sharing these numbers around our team, we may want to remove some of these fields so we don't share sensitive information. 
This is a report we may want to schedule to Paul on a monthly basis to make sure he's keeping on top of his KPIs. To do that, very simply, hit schedule, enter all of his details, and save the report. It's important to consider the fields that you show on the report when you do schedule them. Now let's look at our last set of reports, the client reports, starting with partner performance. The partner performance report is excellent for understanding the performance of each partner, and more importantly, understanding the performance of each client within their portfolio. When you run this report, you may want to consider changing the period or change from client to client groups for the report. Now this report is just like the WIP movement report, except it includes time and average charge rate information. A great way to sort this report is by invoiced. We can see Yasmin Young here as the partner that has invoiced the most from her portfolio. If we expand here, we can see a list of all of her client groups. It's really interesting to run our eye down here and make sure that we're charging appropriately for each client. To do this, we look at our average charge rates. Looks like Steely Limited is one we need to check out. A $99 average charge rate, and that's been caused by a high number of write-offs for the client. Now let's take a look at the client report. The client performance report is the same format as the partner performance report, but we have different grouping options available. It's a great idea to run this report as the last 12 months as you're getting a rolling average charge rate balance for the last 12 months, but we do have other options such as last financial year, which is great for repricing your services, or year to date to see how everyone's performing for the current year. Let's hit run. A great way to sort this report is by average charge rate. This has been sorted from low to high, so at the bottom here we have some really bad average charge rates. Looking at Fred's Foam Limited, $24 an hour, but more of a concern is Money Solutions here. We've done 128 hours of work at $26 an hour. These are the clients that we want to review and lift their fees for the next financial year so we don't repeat the same mistakes. Finally, let's take a look at our Service Performance Report. The Service Performance Report provides incredible insight into how your team are performing on different services you offer your clients. We're going to run the report for the last 12 months, grouped by task, and we can expand the task to see the staff member that's worked on it. Let's sort the report by average charge rate. Now what's really fascinating here is when we start expanding these tasks to get more information. Let's focus on annual accounts, which is where the majority of our time goes. Here are all of our team members sorted from high to low based on their average charge rate. You can see Yasmin has the highest average hourly rate on annual accounts, at $277. We come to the bottom, we can see Phil Phillips here at $49 an hour. This allows us to see which team members are struggling to deliver which tasks so we can step in and provide them the support they need. Another great way to use this report is to find tasks that we're struggling to deliver within budget. If we come to the bottom here, we can see tasks such as zero conversions. We're doing zero conversions at $10 an hour. So we can expand this to really investigate who's working on this task and why they might be writing time off. Let's head back home. And I'll show you the settings area. So these are all the settings that you can set up and also add and remove users. Now if you do want any further help, we have more detailed videos by clicking help for this page, or you can always chat with support to speak to someone from our support team. So there's the overview of link reporting. I hope you found it to be a useful session. Now as promised, my three top tips on how to improve the performance of your practice, it's to focus on your productivity, your recoverability, and finally your pricing. You can improve your productivity by looking at your team and your practice performance reports and making sure you do use schedule and send so everyone in the team is on the same page and tracking well towards their KPIs. Then we're looking at your recoverability, that's your write-offs. Making sure you use the reports available to really understand and drill into those write-offs to get a good understanding of why they're occurring so we can take steps to make sure they don't happen again. Finally, our pricing. We want to be using our client performance report to understand our average charge rates by client or by client group. That way we can identify the clients that are underperforming and can lift their fees for future engagements. So thanks for hanging around to the end of this video and do contact our support team if you have any questions.